While I was looking for ideas for the next video, I came across this site that didn't just win site of the day, it actually took site of the month this April. It's packed with some really sleek animations, but the one that caught my eye right away was this text scribble section. When you scroll into it, the text is completely hidden at first, but these rounded highlight blocks start animating in, perfectly matching the shape of each word. Then, as you keep scrolling, the actual words begin to fade in one by one while those blocks fade out. And it doesn't stop there. As you continue scrolling down, the whole thing reverses, the text starts fading out again, and those highlight blocks slide back in to take their place. It's such a clever way to bring attention to what would otherwise be a clean section of text, and I thought it would be fun to try recreating it. After spending some time experimenting, I was able to build a very similar version of the scroll driven text animation using just JavaScript and scroll trigger. I also added those playful highlight blocks in bright colors to make the text look a bit more dynamic. In this video, I'll walk you through how to create this kind of scroll based text animation using basic HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and scroll trigger. If you find my work helpful, please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you want to access the source code for this project, plus hundreds of other similar micro projects, along with a new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's jump into the code. For the HTML setup, we are keeping things pretty simple. I'll create 5 sections and give each one a unique class name. Inside each section, I'll add a wrapper called copy container. This will help us style the sections later to give them that clean, card-like appearance with rounded corners. Now, in the hero, CTA and outro sections, I'm just adding an H1 with some placeholder text. You don't technically need all of these, but I've added them to make the layout feel more complete and avoid having an empty scroll experience. Next comes the important part, I'll add a common class name anim text container to both the about and features sections. We'll use this class in JavaScript later to attach scroll trigger instances and control the scroll based animations. So make sure to add this class to any section where you want the text animation to happen. Inside both of those sections, I'll add another div with the class anim text. This is where all the animated copy goes, just a couple of paragraphs for now. If you plan to reuse this animation in your existing project, remember to keep the structure the same. Wrap your animated text inside anim text and make sure its parent section has the anim text container class, otherwise the animation logic won't apply. And that's all we need for the HTML structure, let's move on to styling it with CSS. To get started, I've already imported the font, we'll be using DMSense from Google Fonts to give the layout a clean modern look. Next, we'll reset some base styles, we'll remove default margins and paddings and set box sizing to border box so layouts behave more predictably. Then for the body, we'll apply the DMSense font and set the background to a dark grey. This gives the entire design a minimal high contrast base. Now for the section layout, each one will take up the full screen and be padded slightly for breathing room. We'll position them relatively and make sure any overflow is hidden. Inside each section, we have got a wrapper called copy container. We'll stretch it to fill the section completely and use flexbox to center everything both horizontally and vertically. We'll also round the corners a bit and align the text in the center. Next, we'll style the heading inside the container. We'll keep it narrow so it doesn't stretch across the whole screen. Set the text color to match the background, make the font large and bold, and keep the line spacing tight for a strong stacked look. Next, I'll add background colors to the main sections. The hero section gets a bold orange, the CTA section gets a bright green, and the outro section gets a vibrant purple blue. For the about and features sections, we are not using a background fill, instead we are giving them a subtle dashed border in a muted grey to set them apart. Next, we'll style the animated text block, we'll keep it fairly narrow and center everything inside. For each paragraph, we'll use white text, keep it bold, center the alignment and add a little spacing between them. We'll also tighten the line height so the text feels punchy and compact. Now let's set up the styles that we'll apply to each word in the animated paragraphs. Later in JavaScript, we'll split each paragraph into individual words. Each word will be wrapped inside a span containing the text itself and that span will be then wrapped in a div with the class word. We'll also apply some extra classes to specific words that need special styling. For example, since we want certain words to have a colored background, we'll add a common class called keyword to the span and also use the actual word as a class name. This lets us target each one with a different background color. Now styling wise, we'll make each word block display in line and position it relative so we can layer the highlight effects properly. We'll give it a bit of spacing around the edges, apply some padding and round the corners to give it that pill shaped look. We'll also add a will change property to help the browser optimize upcoming animations. 
If a word is one of our highlighted keywords, its outer div will also get an extra class called keyword wrapper. This helps us tweak the spacing since we are going to use a pseudo element to create that colored background behind the word. Inside each word span, we'll again position things relative so we can layer the highlight behind it using the before pseudo element. Now for the keyword spans, we'll make them display as inline blocks, fill the available space and give them a bold text color so they pop over the highlight. We'll then use a before pseudo element to create that soft rounded background behind each keyword. This pseudo element is absolutely positioned in the center of the word, stretched slightly beyond the word size and sent behind the text using Z index. Depending on the word, we'll apply different background colors to these highlights. These extra classes allow us to customize each word's background independently without hard coding the styles. Lastly, by default, both the word wrapper and inner span are set to be fully hidden as their initial state. We'll animate them in later using scroll trigger. Now let's add a few responsive tweaks for smaller screens. We'll reduce the heading size slightly, stretch the layout to better fit narrower viewports, and add the spacing between words and paragraphs to keep things clean and readable. That finishes up the CSS setup. In the next step, we'll jump into JavaScript where we'll split the text, apply these classes dynamically, and bring the entire scroll animation to life. At the top, we are importing GSAP and the scroll trigger plugin, and also bringing in Lennis for smooth scrolling. Then, I'll just paste in some setup code from Lennis documentation. This part isn't anything custom. It's the exact snippet you'll find on their site just to add smooth scrolling to the entire page. We hook Lennis into the GSAP sticker so that it updates properly on every frame, and we also disable GSAP's leg smoothing to keep the scroll in sync. Next, we grab all the paragraph elements inside the animated text blocks. These are the ones we want to split into individual words later. Then we define a color value that we'll use as the base background for the non-keyword highlight blocks. After that, we create a list of keywords. These are the words we want to highlight with the unique background colors. We'll use this array to detect which words in the text need special styling. Now we'll loop through each paragraph inside the anim text sections and break them down word by word. First, we'll grab the full text content of the paragraph. Then, we'll split that text into an array of words using a space as the separator. After that, we'll clear out the original paragraph content because we are going to rebuild it using new elements for each word. Now, inside the loop, we'll go over each word individually. We'll first check if the word is not empty, just to make sure we are not dealing with any accidental white space. Then, we'll create a div element which will act as a wrapper for the word. This will get the class name word. This outer wrapper is what we'll be animating and styling with the block background behind the text. Next, we'll create a span element to hold the actual word text itself. We'll set its text content to the word we just pulled from the paragraph. Now, to check if the word is one of our highlighted keywords, we'll normalize it first. That means we convert the word to lowercase and strip out any punctuation like commas, periods, or quotation marks. This is important because we want to match the raw word itself without things like dots or commas interfering with our check. Then we compare the cleaned up word against the list of the keywords we defined earlier. If it's a match, we'll apply two extra classes. First, we'll add keyword wrapper to the outer div. This lets us adjust spacing and layout around the keywords, especially since we are using a pseudo element later to draw the background. Second, we'll add both keyword and the actual word name as class names on the span itself. This gives us complete control in CSS to assign different background colors to different words. Finally, we'll append the span into the div and then append the entire div back into the paragraph. We'll repeat this for every word in the paragraph until the entire block has been rebuilt with the custom structure. So now, every single word inside these paragraphs is individually wrapped and keywords have the right classes applied for highlighting. This structure is what gives us full control later to animate each word independently using scroll trigger. Now let's set up the scroll based animation. We'll start by selecting all sections with the class anim text container. These are the blocks we want to pin and animate as the user scrolls through them. Next, we'll loop through each container and create a scroll trigger instance for it. We'll set the trigger and the pin target to the container itself. We'll start the animation when the top of the container hits the top of the viewport and we'll end it after scrolling through a span that's about 4 times the height of the screen. This gives us enough room to animate each word in and out smoothly. We'll enable pin spacing so the rest of the page doesn't jump when we pin the section. Now comes the main animation logic inside the onUpdate callback. This function runs continuously as the user scrolls through the section. First, we get the current scroll progress which goes from 0 at the start to 1 at the end. Then we grab all the word elements inside the current container and store the total number of words. 
We'll animate each of these words based on their index and the current scroll position. Now we check if the scroll progress is in the first 70% of the scroll. This is the phase where words will reveal themselves one by one. We define the 70% as our main animation range. To calculate how far into that reveal phase we are, we divide the current progress by the target range and cap it at 1 to avoid overshooting. Then we define how much overlap we want between each word's animation. Here we are overlapping about 15 words at a time to keep the flow smooth. To calculate how long the entire reveal sequence takes relative to the number of words, we add 1 to the overlap ratio. This gives a slightly extended timeline. Now for each word, we calculate its start and end point as a fraction of the total number of words. The word start is basically where that word begins in the scroll timeline and word end includes the overlap offset. Then we scale the timeline so the animation feels consistent across different paragraph lengths. The scaling factor normalizes the values so that everything fits within the scroll distance we defined earlier. Using this, we calculate the adjusted start and endpoints for each word's reveal window. The duration for each word is simply the difference between those two values. Now we calculate the individual word progress. If we haven't reached the word start yet, the progress is 0. If we have already passed its end, the progress is 1. Otherwise, we find how far we are between start and end and divide that portion by the word's duration to get a normalized value between 0 and 1. We use that to set the word's opacity. So words gradually fade in as we scroll down based on where they are in the paragraph. Next, we handle the background fade out as each word's opacity approaches 1. Specifically in the last 10% of its reveal, we begin fading out its background. This creates that smooth effect where the grey highlight disappears just as the word becomes fully visible. To calculate that, we subtract 0.9 from the word's progress and divide it by the last 10%. We cap it so it doesn't go below 0. Then, we use that value to reduce the background opacity and finally, we reveal the inner span text. We wait until the word is almost fully revealed, around 90%, and then gradually fade in the text inside. Here we slightly ease the opacity using a square root so the text reveal feels smoother and more natural. That wraps up the first half of the scroll logic where the words animate in and the highlights fade out. Now let's handle the reverse animation. This kicks in when the scroll progress goes beyond that 70% threshold. So first, we calculate how far we are into the remaining scroll using the formula progress minus 0.7 divided by 0.3. That gives us a normalized reverse progress value from 0 to 1. We start by resetting the word's base opacity to fully visible and define the final text opacity as 1. Next, we define how many words we want to overlap as they fade out. Here we are using 5, that just means a few words will fade out at a time to create that smooth staggered exit. Just like before, we calculate where this word starts and ends within the reverse timeline by dividing the index by the total words count. We then scale this timeline using the same normalization trick we used earlier. This ensures the fade out animation distributes evenly across all words regardless of paragraph length. We calculate the adjusted start and end points for the reverse fade and then figure out how long that fade should last for each word. Then we compute the individual word progress again. If we haven't reached the start of the word's fade, the progress is 0. If we have passed the end, the progress is 1. Otherwise, we interpolate between the start and end to get a smooth transition. Now based on that progress, we apply the reverse fade out. As the word progresses through this range, we gradually reduce the inner text's opacity, starting from fully visible and moving down towards 0. At the same time, we bring the background highlight back in. This reverses what we did earlier, so the background fades back in just as the word itself fades out. If the reverse progress hasn't started yet, we leave the text fully visible and hide the background. But once the progress kicks in, we fade the text out while fading the background in, recreating that clean looping effect you saw in the demo. And that completes the scroll animation cycle. We now have a fully controlled word by word animation where text fades in as you scroll, highlights disappear and then everything reverses smoothly on the way out. That's pretty much it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.